Hey, おはようございます。皆さん、this is Gray over at Wakazashi's Tea House in Japan. Feeling very genki and early morning here. I'm still in my pajamas, kind of. I'm feeling very grey with this top on. I'm trying to be like Tariq in this issue. He's the hooded man at one point. But anyway, what are we talking about? I have a review of the third Ghost Machine launch title. It's Geiger, issue one, written by Jeff Johns, again. It's got art by Gary Frank, colours by Brad Anderson. Now, this is issue one of an ongoing series, and I did read the previous Geiger mini series, which I did enjoy, by the way. I like this character. I like him, the glowing man. I like the setup. But yeah, the question is can you read and enjoy this without having any background for the character? I think it works as an opening issue. You can. You kind of dropped into the world, but you do get some、um, information about you know, what happened, where they are, what's caused this basically you know, nuclear wasteland. It's got a bit of a Mad Max vibe to it, you know, the dystopian future where there's been a terrible nuclear war. No one's really sure why. And it's left people desperate, people like just about surviving. You know, we get gangs roaming the area, taking、uh, what they want, who they want at times. The bullies taking over. But who's going to stand up to the bullies? That's a question. Wakizashi? Maybe, if I could. But I don't have two glowing,、um, what are they, banter sticks? I want to say banter sticks. No, wait a minute. That's from Star Wars, isn't it? Like Daredevil's billy clubs or, you know, two radioactive batons. Great weapons, by the way. So, yeah.、Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to make my mind up about my favourite of the three new Ghost Machine titles so far. I think I'm going to go with Rook Exodus. That was my favourite. Red Coat was a lot of fun. You know, it was kind of bonkers, goofy fun. And this, this seems like it's going to be a bit of a slow burn. But yeah, I would go for Rook Exodus as the pick of the, the bunch, pick of the three. But if you want to try this and if you like Gary Frank's awesome art, because it is. It's awesome yet again in this. Maybe have a look at this as well. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to show you the first few pages. Not going to spoil the ending as usual, give you an idea of the art, a little bit of the story, and we'll look inside the book. So please keep watching. Here we go. Okay, this is what we get on the credits page. A devoted husband and father, Tarek Geiger, was stricken by a debilitating cancer. Desperate to be there for his family, Tarek fought the disease as hard as he could. When the mysterious conflict known as the Unknown War erupted and the bombs fell, Tarek was caught in the fallout and transformed into the Glowing Man. After discovering his family did not survive, this nuclear nomad walks the irradiated desert, looking for any excuse to share his rage with evildoers he deems deserving. The time setting is 25 years in the future. If you haven't read Geiger before, you get this in the opening page. It's got vibes of Mad Max Fury Road, the kind of dystopian future science fiction story where you know, there's been a devastating nuclear war and people are just about surviving. But look at the state of the country here, it's wrecked. Evil gangs are patrolling the, what's left of the cities or towns in America, taking what they want and who they want. Nobody likes a bully, right? The gang leader approaches a hooded man, sat quietly, minding his own business, reading Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Nosferatu, I will read it one day, I promise. You have stolen my dreams. Look closely at the panel there with the dog. Are there two dogs? No, it's a two headed dog, a mutant dog. What's the name of that one from the underworld? Is it Cerberus or Cerebus? Never know how to pronounce that. Well, he obviously picked the wrong man to bully because we don't see the transformation, but this is the glowing man in all his glowing glory. Gotta say, I love that burning handprint on the guy's face on the floor there. Nice detail by Gary Frank. One of the gang members grabs a young boy as a hostage, and look closely here, we see his face change. Tarek seeing his own son in the boy's face. Well, as you can guess, the gang member isn't long for this world. I love the bottom panel here where we see Geiger tossing his baton, his radioactive baton. It's like a billy club, like Daredevil. Love the angle, the perspective there. The people in the town are wary of him. They know his name, they know the glowing man, but they're not sure. Tarek picks up his book and walks away. Then we see what looks like a, a modern version of a knight. He's peeping from behind a post, watching Geiger walk away. Next, we're out in the wasteland somewhere, and we see Geiger's dog growling at something in the distance. He can see a distant fire. 
I told that idiot to stop following me. Then the next morning we see this erstwhile knight finding the campfire that's been long put out. Where'd they go? Then he gets grabbed from behind. Again, let me point out this great art by Gary Frank. Look at the top panel here. The angle we've got, the knight being tossed onto the ground by Geiger. And again, I love this lettering, the onomatopoeia. Scratch! Okay, there's still like 12 pages of story to go. Um, I'm not going to do any more of the summary. I just want to show this one more page. This classic, iconic scene from the book. It's a great action pose. Look at that. Geiger, the glowing mind in all his glory. It's better to burn out than to fade away. And there you go. That's my story summary. Well, for half of the book. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, before I get onto the variant covers, to talk about a score. Now, so far from the three titles, I gave Rook 9 out of 10. I gave Redcoat, um, issue 1, a, a 7.5. And I'm kind of divided with this, Geiger. I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's not a great, great issue. It's a bit of a slow burn, slow build this. So I think um, probably the same, same as Redcoat. I'll give this a 7.5 out of 10. And got to shout out the art again. Gary Frank's art is excellent. So... Here we go, the first variant, and it's Ivan Rice, yet again. He's done three variant covers, and from what I heard, I just found out, they work as a kind of wraparound cover if you put them all together. So if you get the three Ivan Rice variants, you've got a really cool, huge picture. And the only other variant that's showing on the League of Comic Book Geeks website is this, the blank variant, which is a blank variant for each of the titles. So that's it. You only get the one main variant cover, and you get this. So... Which one would you go for, or do you prefer the main cover? Do let me know in the comments, and do let me know what you thought of this book. If you read it, if you're going to read it, are you going to pick it up? Tell me about the Ghost Machine titles. Which one of the three, or which two, um, are you most interested in? I'd love to hear from you, and do let me know what you think if you've read them. Okay, well that's it for the review. I do hope you enjoyed it. Do drop a comment, and I hope to see you in a future video, but not at 6 in the morning. Okay, matane.